And I do so by blowing a little bit of air into the blowpipe and then capping my thumb over top of it. See that? Now, like I mentioned earlier, we're going to be working in layers. And in order to gather another layer of clear over top of this bubble, I have to allow it to cool off. The glass actually cools off very rapidly. Uh, throughout the process, I'm going to have to go back into the furnace here and uh, maintain my heat in order to keep the material malleable enough to work with. So give it a few more seconds here. And in a matter of a minute or so, it becomes solid. So this is going to allow me to get a secondary gather of clear And at this point, I'm going to roll the clear into these little chips over here. This is referred to as frit, and it is colored glass. And it gets its color from different metallic oxides that have been added to the clear glass during the manufacturing process. And they just kind of stick to the surface of the clear because it's so hot those little chips heat up and they adhere themselves to the surface of the clear so in this next step i'm going to melt all those little chips into the surface of the clear and it's going to create one homogeneous blob of glass now in a traditional glass blowing shop, we would have a secondary reheating chamber separate from the furnace. But for reasons of practicality, I'm just using the furnace itself as a reheating chamber. Now that I've melt melted those little chips of glass into the surface of the clear, I'm gonna use a handheld wooden mold, which we refer to as a block to just shape and smooth the glass. It's a process of symmetry. I want everything to be nice and round and centered. Now the block is made out of fruit wood, which has never been allowed to dry out. And when we apply the block to the glass, what's happening is the moisture is evaporating immediately and the glass is riding on a little bed of steam in between the wood. So now that I have a nice round shape, I'm going to start to inflate my bubble. Just by getting it hot and a, blowing a little bit of pressure down the pipe. You can gradually expand the bubble. So I'm going to place the bubble in what's known as an optic mold, and there's, there's two of them down here on the ground. It's a tall one and a short one. And these are how we get the ridges in the pumpkin. So basically, I need to shape this bubble into the shape of the optic mold. I'm going to get it nice and hot, and I'm going to jam the bubble into the mold and blow really hard and it's going to force the glass into the edges of that star-shaped mold creating the ridges of the pumpkin and as i blow the pumpkin out those ridges are going to expand say what So once I get this bubble nice and hot, 
And hot, you guys, is sort of a relative term in glass blowing. Hot's anything between 900 and 2100 degrees, so. I'm gonna jam it into this mold. Blow some pressure in there. And now we have little ridges for our pumpkin. A little bit. Now I can gradually blow this bubble out in order to form the pumpkin shape. But in order to get the pumpkin off the pipe, I'm going to have to create a constriction that's going to separate the pumpkin from the blowpipe. And for that, I'm going to use this long tweezer-like tool called the jacks. They're called the jacks. And I'm going to very slowly and gradually form a constriction in between the bubble and the blowpipe. Now this constriction is going to set up a point of weakness and it's going to allow me to break the pumpkin off of the end of the blowpipe at a later point in the process. So now I'm going to blow and expand this bubble into more or less its final shape. Yeah, I got one up there. You can just use that green color over there. So that I know that step happened really quickly because I have a limited amount of time to work with the glass. But we've more or less accomplished our final shape of the pumpkin. There's just a few little touch-ups. Gonna use a tool called the tweezers to kind of poke in the top and sink in the bottom of the pumpkin, giving it that distinct pumpkin shape. And this is John, everybody. John is gonna help me put a stem on the pumpkin. Now, in glass blowing, we usually work in teams of two. Although it's not impossible to blow glass by yourself, it's not that much fun either. So John's just preparing a couple gathers of clear. It's gonna roll into the color. And just like I did earlier, <laughs> cramming the bubble into that uh, mold over there, John is also going to stick the stem into one of those molds to create the ridges. Now I have to maintain a certain level of heat in this pumpkin. If I allow it to cool down too much, it's gonna to start to crack and fracture. It's gonna fall off the end of the blowpipe. I got some right here for you. They're kind of crusty, so. That is incredibly hot, dude. I'm married, so I have a wife. All right, so John's prepped the stem. He stuck it into the optic mold. And he's going to present the stem to me. Go ahead and stab it to the top of the pumpkin. Go ahead and flip. We're gonna pull and twist. 
Got it. And curly cues. Ooh. Now just a few more minor adjustments. I need to uh, just dial in the stem, make sure everything is copacetic. And there you have it everybody, a glass pumpkin. Now, this is going to be a bright, bright orange with a bright green stem, but the, the heat distorts the color, so you can't really tell what color it is. It just kind of looks red and scabby right now. So the last step in this process is to remove the pumpkin from the blowpipe. And as I mentioned earlier, that constriction I cut into the pumpkin is going to be the weak point at which I break it off. And I'm going to break the pumpkin off just by setting it on this little table here and giving it a little light tap. And I use a torch to soften any sharp edges that might have occurred as a result of that fracturing point. And the last step is to place the pumpkin in what's known as an annealing oven. And that's this little blue box over here. Now, an annealing oven allows us to slowly cool the pumpkin over, I don't know, a 14 to 16 hour period. Uh, if I were to just leave that pumpkin out on the table, and it were to cool down rapidly to ambient air temperature, it would start to fracture and fall apart. So everything we make needs to go through an annealing process. Well, that's it. That's how pumpkins are made. Thanks for coming out, you guys. If glass blowing is something that interests you, uh, the Bay Area Glass Institute does offer several different glass uh, blowing classes and glass working classes. All of those classes can be found on their website at bagi.org. Thank you.